You might draw a little circle. This is where you are. Ten years from now, you could be here, or ten years from now, you could be here. And the difference in ten years between here and here could be significant in money and lifestyle, treasures, equity. In ten years, an incredible difference. But right here, a small difference in the change of discipline, the change of thinking to start you on this journey versus this journey. Now, it's also very important intellectually to know whether or not you're headed this way or this way. And once you decide, 10 years from now, I think that the gathering of my intellectual and personal and spiritual and moral and economic treasure may not be that great. The key is to start right now making these changes to walk this new road. But here's what's exciting to me. Just a few daily disciplines makes a great deal of difference in one year, three years, five years, just a few daily disciplines. And that's what I'd like to talk about in this series, just these few daily disciplines that make the difference, whether you wind up here or here. Good question. Ten years from now, you will surely arrive. The question is, where? We don't want to kid ourselves about where. We don't want to kid ourselves about the road we're walking. I had a day shortly after I met Mr. Schof called Do Not Kid Myself Anymore Day. I don't want to go disillusioned anymore. You know, I was using the cross finger theory back when I was 25, 24, 23. I finally decided that the cross finger theory was not going to get me what I wanted. That isn't where the treasure lies. That I'm going to have to make sure which of these ways I'm headed. But a few reading disciplines and a few disciplines of mind and a few disciplines of activity, and you can make all the difference in the world whether you wind up here or whether you wind up here. Okay. But just a few changes. Sometimes we get the idea that we're doing about 10% and there's about 90% more that we need in order to make the difference for our fortune. And probably the opposite is true, right? We're doing enough things to have arrived here today. We're doing enough things to have bought and shared in the good life so far. And maybe all you need is that extra 5%, 10% of intellectual change, activity change, a refinement of discipline, a refinement of thought. And all we need is the ideas to make those simple changes. And the equity starts gathering in one year, three years, five years, 10 years. I have a good comment for your notes. Now's the time to fix the next 10 years. Now's the time to fix it. Now, sometimes you have to come to grips with reality and with truth. That's what was good for me when I met Mr. Schof. I was 25 years old, he was 44 years old. And he brought me a wealth of experience and he started asking me the tough questions. Big question, he said, are you reading the books that's gonna take you where you want to go in the next five years? Excellent question. So you wanna make sure. I would assume for all of you to get where you wanna be in the next five years, you're either reading the right books or you're not. That's kind of a brilliant statement, right? You're either engaged in the disciplines or you're not. But here's what we don't wanna engage in disillusion, right? Hoping without acting, you know, wishing without doing. So the key is to take a look and say, where am I? What could I do to make the changes, to make sure that I can take more certain daily steps toward the treasure I want, the mental treasure, the personal treasure, the spiritual treasure, the financial treasure. I don't want to make any errors. Now's the time to adjust my daily program to take me where I want to go. So hopefully I'll have some ideas to share with you that might help make just a few adjustments. And in lecturing for especially the last 16, 18 years, a good note for you to take. We could all use a little coaching. When you're playing the game, it's sometimes hard to see it all. And if you just take a breather, take a little time out. That's what we're doing here in this lecture series. Take a little time out, listen to someone's experiences, which is what I want to share with you, my experiences, my ideas, and see if it might cause for you a little moment of correction so that you can make some changes that'll add up to some extra worth in the next one year, three years, five years. So ideas, I hope you'll find here during this series. All kinds of ideas, health ideas, enterprise ideas, living a better life, ideas, and primarily for this series, skills of leadership, ideas. The next key word is inspiration. Inspiration is a mystery why some people are inspired and some are not. Who knows what that mystery is? Some people have this incredible zest for life and an appetite for living well and doing well, and others seem to take the ho-hum attitude, let it slide, and hopefully it'll work out anyway. I don't know what the difference of that is, but it is exciting to watch people who are inspired. But I think the key to it all is self-motivation. Self-motivation. The guy says, boy, if somebody just come by and turn me on, hey, what if they don't show up? You got to have a better plan for your life. 
personal inspiration, drawing emotional vitality from life and the challenge, going for it. We all admire that. Anything can happen. Have you heard of Murphy's Laws? Murph had these laws. One of them was, if anything can go wrong, it will. That's one of Murphy's Laws. He was not one of the great positive speakers of the day. But anyway, it's still true though, right? Anything can go wrong, everything can go wrong. For sure. I've fallen out of the sky so many times. Once to the tune of a couple of million. Devastating. Took me a while to survive that one. Now, it wasn't all that much, but it was all I had. <laughs> I mean, that's when it's much, right? When it's all you got. If you got three to go, you got one left. You ain't looking that bad. But when it all goes. But see, those are the happenings, right? Everything can happen. Anything can happen. But it's not the happenings. It's what you do about it. Somebody says, yeah, but you don't understand the disappointments I've had. Come on. Disappointments are not special gifts reserved for the poor. Everybody has them. The difference is what you do about it. It's not the weather. I used to blame the weather and I discovered it rains on the rich. So see, that won't help. Two men wake up one morning, there's a rainstorm on. One of them looks out his window, sees the rainstorm and he says, wow, what a storm. With weather like this, they can't expect you to go out and make sales. He stays home. Same morning, the other guy looks out his window, sees the same storm, says, wow, what a storm. But he says, you know what, with weather like this, what a great day to go out and make sales. Most everybody will probably be home, especially the salesman. See, that's the difference in how your life works out. It's not what happens, it's what you do. So here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you going to do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Now see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. And see, that way you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five. Because the next five are going to be like the last five unless you, major key, tomorrow, change it all. Or change a little, or change something, or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life. What can you do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Good question. What can you do with economic chaos, massive disappointment? What can you do with a broken heart? What can you do and it won't work? Good question. So if I had a word with you tonight, one-on-one, -on -one, just you and me, I think my personal advice to you would be, unreach down inside of you and come up with some more of those remarkable human gifts. They're there, waiting to be utilized. And then change anything for you you want to change. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. If it doesn't please you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same again, only by choice. If you don't like your present address, change it. You're not a tree.